We can be so molested by our wants and desires that we overlook visible red flags and life-saving truths that stop us from becoming our own demise. Welcome, you lovers of self. It's Tori, the hope dealer of Guided Intuition. This quote right here is one that taught me a very hard lesson about self-love is the reason why I am a healer, why I am into personal development, um, why I am so passionate about helping beautiful souls free their self from destructive habits that ultimately become our undoing. And this is why I'm so passionate about codependency. You ever heard somebody say, when you see someone that's so passionate about something that you do, that you know there is a backstory of why they do what they do. And this quote is that interpretation. Because what I've realized is that we live in a society and a world that is structured around wanting, right? We're molested by wanting. And I use molested for a reason because to want something is to imply that you are lacking. And the more that you are in lack or you deem yourself as lacking, that space is never full, right? So when we're not full, what are we naturally going to do? We're going to search and try to find and put certain people, places and things in a space that it shouldn't be. Sometimes we can want something so bad, right? And we see it all the time where people end up losing their self, losing their mind, losing their job, losing their integrity, um, losing their life behind a want. And there is nothing wrong with desire, right? That's a natural thing that we have as human. We come here for desires and to experience those things. But what I've realized is everything needs balance. And when you are not balanced within wanting, when there is no, quote unquote, limit, right? When you are so molested by a want, it can become your demise. And to truly get personal about this quote and, and what this quote really means, I have to share a part of my story. <laughs> Woo! And you know, I'm a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie, because you know, we have parts of our stories, right, where we just wish like, oh my God, I cannot believe that I actually did that. And we're so grateful that we're out of it. And we just kind of want to keep it trucking, baby. We don't want to look back on that. But I know that there are so many souls who have found their self in this predicament, right? By sharing our story and being vulnerable in my transparency, that it helps somebody. Um, for one, realize that they're not alone and inspires you to create change in your life and realize, you know, well, maybe, you know, what want have you been allowing to molest you, you know, to the point that it can become your own undoing, your own demise. And the category that I'm going to talk about is when it comes to love um, or romanticizing love right? <laughs> Romanticizing love, how that almost became my own undoing. And it was really unhealthy. And I want to talk about love because, you know, um, as much as I don't like people to put me in boxes, <laughs> when it comes to personal development and spirituality, I probably get grouped in the mystics and, you know, the spiritual. And you know how um, in the spiritual community, where we know that the world um, there's a world that we can't see that really does exist and I do not believe that this is our first rodeo here and sometimes we can get so in that zone so fixated on that that we 
um, kind of allow that to become our own undoing or put us in a state of delusion, okay? So I just want to let you know that this topic could be a little triggering, but it's through me exposing that little thing that I had to overcome that, you know, my shit, <laughs> that it gives you the courage to do the same. All right. So the example that I'm going to share when it comes to this quote is I'm going to talk about it in a love aspect. However, it's not just linked to love. And I'm really going to talk about it, too, as a, a person that's part of the spiritual community um, and was on what we know as the, a twin flame journey. You know, um, that to me is completely something different than I feel like um, most people people in the spiritual community um, look at it as, I look at that as, you know, a coming together of both dualities or both parts of aspects of myself and learning how to coexist with me, um, coexist with myself in wholeness. Um, I view the twin flame as a self-discovery in self and merging with myself and, and learning to be, in that dynamic with myself right so i don't um go by the traditional standard of what that is i don't go by that the example that i'm going to give it goes beyond just one category because one of the things that i realized we will allow want to molest us right we will allow them to control us and, and take over our life till we find ourselves just doing any and everything to obtain this want, right? This, this, this high and this chase. But I've realized when we are molested by our wants, right? <laughs> and this is why I say molested because it, it feels filthy, right? It just feels like, oh, that's something that we should just not be doing. It's, it's very repulsive and we know what um, molestation you know is usually centered around right I don't think I need to say that um, but I feel like sometimes we can allow those wants to molest us we can allow that urge for whatever that thing is be it a person place or thing and ultimately it becomes our own demise it becomes our own undoing sometimes we don't even recognize who we are when we look in the mirror you know we don't you know we're just so fixated on this. For some people, that want can take them out of this life. When I started to heal my codependency and started to seek help for certain addictions and certain things, right? Because it comes from a sense of validation. It comes from a sense of lack of knowing yourself, really in tune with yourself. When usually when we seek things outside of ourself, right, when we're molested by these things, it's because we don't really know or have an inkling of who we are. We're so out of tune with who we are. Usually when we are molested by a desire, it is really linked to our trauma all right and lack of self-worth is what i have found out within myself and other beautiful souls that i work have worked with but it's not limited but i just want to tell this story right because i feel like you really can't get the gist of this <laughs> quote without me telling the story of the moment that i realized that i needed to work on myself And started and start to feel whole within myself. I don't know how to say this. It's, it's just I did not think I was gonna cry in this. <laughs> I didn't think I was gonna cry, guys. But I gotta I gotta say it. <laughs> You always hear me say I talk about how I was the most Disney programmed of them all. And I've always had this, <laughs> you know, for a long time and stuff, and until I started to get a handle on it, I had this very um, unhealthy obsession 
with romance okay and love and the idea I, I love I idolize love and that was really due to my childhood and my father wound and the lack of my father being present and I feel like it just put me on this search of wanting to find that um, stability safety that I never got from my father and I idolized fairy tales <laughs> um, and I was so molested by the want of having love in another that on several occasions it almost cost me my life like as in there would be no guided intuition um you wouldn't know Tori mm. <laughs> mm. I didn't think I was gonna cry guys um, you wouldn't know Tori, there would be none of this. Um, firstly, it was the man that I married, where he was highly um, unstable mentally by his own issues and, and his own things. And I knew it, right? And I feel like sometimes we know that going into relationships and we can see we can see it a mile away. Sometimes we see them red facts. We see that this person is unstable. This person is not what we need. But yet we are so molested by the thought of love and experiencing love that we put ourselves in compromising positions. And this is why I do not believe in compromise. You don't have to compromise for something that's truly for you if you are in alignment but that's another story um just on several occasions i knew that this relationship was unhealthy but yet i was so molested by being in love and having this picture perfect little marriage and relationship and you know uh, this fairy tale that we sometimes buy into and that was a very mentally abusive relationship for me um I don't even I can't even talk guys very abusive mentally for me um mm. To the point that I wanted to take my own life. I had given up everything, every part of me for my marriage at the time. And when we when he would get mad. We would be driving in, in the car and he would just, you know, go crazy and drive crazy. And like when he left me for my best friend, and, and if I'm truly honest, I already knew that they were together, that I was so mol molested by wanting this ideal of what love looked like and felt like and so consumed with with this that I missed the visible red flags and everything that told me like, okay, Tori, this is not healthy for you. It's time to get out of this marriage. It's time to leave. It's time to go, right? But that romanticizing, that that addiction, that wanting <sighs> that wanting made me stay.
even when we know, you know, we, we see and in our minds it's telling us to leave and get out of that and get out of that relationship. This is not good. This is not where you need to be. And, you know, we don't listen and we stay and, and we, we stay in these environments and we stay in this relationship. And ultimately it started to get worse. And then it became physical and when I finally realized that, oh my God, like I have to get out of this, this is when the scare tactic of him trying to take his own life and, you know, um, when we, when he would get mad, we would be driving in, in the car and he would just, you know, go crazy and drive crazy and like, busting his head open and me having to see that and me thinking I have to stay now and just going in this cycle that ultimately I just felt stuck and I felt like I was in a prison and the only way that I I felt like at that time the only way that I could get out of that situation that I could leave if I'm completely transparent is taking my life that's how I know for a fact when we are so molested by wants, right, and we keep ourselves in toxic situations, um, we become we we become we become entangled in this very unhealthy dynamic, and ultimately it almost became my own demise and. I'm so happy that I did not make that decision, that I had people that loved me and seeing that I was going down a path that there would be no returning from. And this is a part of my why, as why I do what I do. I wanna be what somebody was for me that mirror that I am worthy, that I, I can get out of um, these hard situations, that I can live again, that I can find balance within myself, that I don't have to allow this unhealthy desire to control my life and that I can take control of my life. I want to, I'm so passionate about that because I was once a person who needed that. I'm so thankful to my mentor who stepped in and, you know, showed me the importance of meditating and journaling and feng shui and therapy and, and, and all of these tools that have helped me move away from allowing wants to molest me. And, um, you, you guys know I always told you that when, when Tori does something, this is a gift and I, I feel like it's a beautiful gift, but it, sometimes it can become my own undoing. When I do something, there's no half-assing, you know, um, whether that's something that's going to benefit me and, and benefit others around me in a healthy, good way, or when I'm in my shit and when I'm with the shits, I'm going to do it full throttle, right? And I really learned that message with the marriage, with my past marriage, um, why we should not allow desires to molest us because it can become our own undoing. You know, when we're just so gung-ho and so, um, molested by a desire i seen where that can take you and i wish i could say that that was the last time that um you know i got it i got the memo like hey you know <laughs> but no because we can be so caught up and, and so so molested by desire and a want for something that you know we can delusionally delusionally did i say that right create these scenarios right attach ourselves to people and you know 
when we're so immersed in our trauma and again like i said you know these wants and these this muscle the molestation of want comes from lack and wanting to feel something that we will create things that um are not real you know and I pray that I'm saying this right and, and, and I don't want to offend, but there needs to be a level of awareness here. Sometimes we can want love so bad in another, right? We can want that relationship so bad that we are willing to, and when I say we, I'm talking about myself here. <laughs> um, I will never forget that there was a gentleman who you know was handsome but he was a complete stranger and the you know and he, he was throwing around his titles that he's a doctor and you know he um wanted to um literally just met him in the store and you know and you know he's this person and you know um he's spiritual and you know just shopping and someone just you know talking to you and i didn't you know like give him the stink face or anything because if i'm completely honest you know he was attractive and um he was clean and you can tell that he had his like scrubs like that he just got from work and you know i was talking and he was like adamant of you know getting my number and and, and wanting to you know take me out that night and you know i um, wanted to invite me you know to his his space you know and it's like oh my god no 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 and um this is another reason why i'm, I'm so mindful about um pick a car readings and just um things that I say and telling people, oh, you're gonna meet the love of your life at the store one day because depending on where somebody's mental, even if that's true, let's just say it's true, depending on someone's mental state, right? They'll go around looking for that, right? They'll go around looking for that. And, um, you know, they'll meet a person in the store like I did. And, you know, they'll create these delusions and say, oh my God, well, this this must be the person that, you know, somebody was such and such was talking about. And the guy was adamant and wanted to take me to his house and, you know, cook for me. And like, if I sat here and said that I did not entertain that thought, I would be lying. Um, now I look on it, I was like, oh my God. And, and, and the red flags were there because even when I gave him my number, um, he wrote my number down and he wrote the city that I'm from. You get what I'm saying? Like, you get what I'm saying? You know, so this was something that he was doing. And I just remember actually like contemplating, you know, um, meeting up with this man and, and something inside of me was like, Latoria, no. And I told him no, and he was like, well, I'm only in town for a weekend. I really wanna, you know, meet up with you, have drinks, take you out. And it was just something that was just very off about it. And I was like, no, no, <laughs> no, no, ma'am. And um, I was just like, no, no. I was like, no, I'm good, I'm okay. I told him, you know, well, next time, he was like adamant with, you know, hanging out with me and, and connecting with me. And I told him like, uh, no, like something in me, everything was in me was like, no. Do not, don't you dare. And um, I remember telling him no, and I was like, well, you know, the next time you're in town, the next time you're here, I was like, I have plans, I'm doing things, I just can't stop and, you know, just entertain you. I don't even know you. Um, <laughs> next time you're next time you're in town, you know, maybe it'll be meant to be. And um, then, you know, we can, you know, see it. And you could tell that he was highly happy about it. He was adamant about taking me out, getting me somewhere. He was adamant about, you know, just, you know, oh, he's spiritual and, you know, he looked at my, my necklace and you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just very, very, when I think about it and when I got home later, I thought of oh, that was fucking eerie and creepy. Um, but in that time where you're just you're just molested by this want and, and you're just looking for signs and just trying to piece everything together, you can find yourself in places like that okay and i'm and i and i i i i i i um read people for a living i realize past lives and this is not our first ro rodeo but everything needs to be in balance right and when when we're doing these you know looking at readings and we're doing things like that and you're not 
you are immersed in your trauma and you're not balanced within your emotions, you will create situations. You will see things that are not there, that is not with that person. And when I tell you guys that Ten minutes had went by within the store and I seen him, you know, talking to another attractive girl and, you know, um, I think like getting her number and I heard her say, he just asked me to come with his, come, you know, I heard her say, and I really feel like spirit had me here, like here, like have me in ear way so I can hear and I, and I heard her tell her cousin like he crazy as hell. He just asked me, um, he cute but he crazy as hell. He just asked me you know, to come with him, you know, he wanted the, everything that he just told me, he just told her. And she was like, um, hell no. They were like, well, did you talk to him? He looked, he, well, he looked like he got money. Look what kind of, you know, look, look at him. And, um, she was like, hell no, I ain't crazy. Do I look desperate? You know, <laughs> you know, sometimes you be hearing those things. It's like, damn, I was desperate, you know? And I just remember like, not even checking out but just like needing to get out needing to get out you know and i remember like when i felt like the realization of what had just happened and when i seen like that man's energy when I um, got out of that delusion and I got out of that um, molestation of that desire. I almost had a panic attack. I remember calling my sister and like really like drained, really, oh my God, because, you know, again, I can talk about it. I know what I seen on that man. And we see how those stories go in the media that was almost Tori and I just remember like thinking like oh my god and I went down this spiral and I'm like I can't believe that I did that I can't believe and I just remember like my guys my spirit guys and the divine talking to me and telling me like no baby it's okay don't shame yourself but this is why you have to heal your trauma. This is why I'm so passionate about healing my trauma. This is why I'm so passionate about self-discovery. Because when you don't know yourself, when you don't know your worth, when you don't know your value, because self-worth, that's what fuels you. That's what gives you, that's what fills you. So you're not molested by wants. Self-respect is what fills you so you're not molested and intrigued by those wants. Because a want is desire to keep you empty. You ever notice it's just never enough when you're, it's just never enough because you're trying to put something in a place that it doesn't belong. This is why it's so important to have self-love because self-love fills you. Where you're not out here so molested by a desire that it becomes your own undoing and demise. It was hard for me, like when I when I really tapped into that energy, when I when I had to really face myself, when I really sat with myself, when I sat with my spiritual team, and I realized and and you guys hear me talk about that video. I don't know if you guys watched one of my weekly guidances. I'll link it down below where I talked about one of the highest grossing videos that made me the most money that got me a whopping four thousand of the followers that I have um, and made me a lot of money and ultimately could have got me a lot of clout was one of the most traumatic the most times of my life where I was immersed in my trauma and that trauma was romanticizing um, love and idolizing it 
to the point where there was no balance because like I say it's not to say that you know those things are not not to say that we're not true we're i know spirituality is true i know that worlds exist within this world but everything needs balance because when you are immersed in your trauma honey and you hear a pick a car reading and telling you oh the person that you're going to meet at the store and da 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 and da 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 and this and this and this and you take that and you allow that to molest you you will start to project and create situations that are delusional and it will affect your psyche and you will find yourself you know doing certain things this is why you have to look at everything from a balanced place from a healed space and i will never forget all of the the, the readings that i did that was attached to that um so sorry guys that was attached to that reading all the readings that i did that was attached to that video it was chaotic it was trauma felt it was toxic as fuck and i realized by doing these readings and you know telling them certain things you know because sometimes you know i i've i've, I've become you know if anyone had a personal session with me a reading or a, 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 a self-love session you know that i'm very blunt i'm very honest i'm going to give it to you in full dynamics we're not just going to talk about the pretty things we're going to talk about everything and whatever i see i'm, I'm gonna let you know those kind of readings that i was doing you know was keeping people looped and linked into a cycle that was ultimately becoming their own demise and i know we're all adults here i know we're all grown here and now i know why people put that in the tarot messages like you know use your common sense i'm not you know in control of what um you do by listening to this they say that because it can literally go left and they say it's not something that tori is just spectacle guessing on it, it it went left with me and, and and i'm in the business of it okay my camera died so i have to record off my phone but you know i will never forget when i was doing readings that you know people have found me off of that video the energy was very toxic very chaotic very um unhealthy right and reading after reading after reading because like i said I, I made a lot of money off of that you know, I, I made a ton of money off of that um, and it, it got me like some clout and, 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 it, and it got me, you know, connected to, you know, I want to say certain peoples and, and some opportunities. Um, however, when I was doing the reading and like I said, energy cannot be faked and, and you know, that's why it's so important as it, in, in dealing with energy. It's important that I take care of my energy because, you know, it can affect you. And I just remember doing reading after reading after reading after reading after reading and seeing the same, same stuff. And people saying, oh, I, this is my twin flame. And, you know, um, I, um, you know, I haven't talked to this person in two years, but I know they're the one. And, you know, um, just all of these things. And here it is. I'm not, I'm not saying that that's not real and, and that can't, can't happen. Um, and to each person situation, but everyone that I was looking at and everyone that I came in contact, I was like, yeah, no, baby, this, this, this is not the one. In fact, this situation, um, is keeping you in a loop of codependency and a loop for you to choose yourself. Right. And again, most people be like you know what that's not your business you know it, it doesn't matter we're all adults here right and i feel like i remember why i got into guided intuition and why i started to put myself out there i told spirit to bring me the hearts i asked god to bring me the hearts like me bring me the souls that need mending right i know why i do it i'm, I'm very clear on my why okay it's for the people that tell me when they found my video um when they found my video that 
um, it, it gave them the courage to get out of um, that relationship and to love their self and to go back to school and to start their business and to travel the world and to, you know, just really believe again. So I know how powerful words are. And when I seen by my words and, and how much people was taking that sound thing as proof to keep them in a cycle of being molested by a desire, I can't even lie to you. It might not have been the right thing and it might not be the right thing, but I got to tell you the truth. It broke my heart. It broke my heart. And I had to sit my ass down because I'm aware of how powerful your words are. Like I said, words are powerful because what comes in our mind and what we allow out of our mouth, it goes directly into the soul, into the spirit. It goes directly into the soul. It taints the soul, whatever, whatever you speak. So when I tell you guys, thank you for allowing my words into your heart. I say that from a place of, of knowing and understanding how powerful my words are. And I had to sit my tushy down because I couldn't be in my trauma. And because I'm in my shit, I'm spiraling shit. And then that shit is getting spiraled into other people. Enabling their shit. I had to sit with that. And I feel like we see that, you know, people that know and are aware and certain people, I, I won't say any names, but, you know, words are powerful. And when they're in their trauma, depending on who they are and, and where they are in their soul, their path, and you allow that into you in your intimate space, I always tell people, don't, don't, don't you take what I say as first face value. Don't you let that be your truth. You discover what your truth is. You go figure it out. You go find it. So I had to take a break. If you want to know why I ain't touch no pick a card readings and why I ain't did what I what I need what I was <laughs> what that's why cuz I had to be like nah I got I got to be this is this is sacred this is real accountability everyone's accountable for the words that you speak and the so the seeds that you sow in somebody's life whether you willingly know it or don't know it. It's going to plant. So I had to evaluate what do I want to plant? I don't want to fertilize that molested want. I don't want to cater to that. And again, this is not everybody's truth. This is Tori's truth. You understand me? And there's nothing wrong with looking at pick a card readings and, and, and seeing where somebody stand. There's nothing wrong with that. Everything needs balance. And a lot of people will co-sign with you. I don't care about views. I don't care about how the num big numbers are. Because some people are immersed in their trauma. And it's okay. It's okay. But Tori gonna tell you. I ran in circles with a lot of people. Up in the 300k, 100k. And they are highly immersed in their trauma. And this is, I would never name drop. And I would never say that. But I'm just, I'm just letting you know. Don't, don't get fixated on views and stuff everyone allows desires to molest them and it's their choice to come out of that right nobody would have knew that little that little <laughs> that little that little hiccup the Tory was oh my god you oh my god you're so in love with yourself yeah I, now you see why i'm so in love with myself why i'm so adamant about my well-being mm -hmm. yeah because it was a mess. So, <laughs> whew, I hope that I was not all over the place. My camera died, but never allow a desire to molest you. Never be so molested by a want that you allow that want 
to become your own demise, right? Be interdependent. (laughs) You got this. And we've all been there. Don't stay in a relationship because, oh my God, you cut, you have this idea and 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 stuck on this one person or you know in a in in a lifestyle, right? Because it ain't just in love, baby. It it ain't just in love. A lifestyle, you know, a, a certain kind of energy, a friend group, titles. You'll be surprised how everything looks pretty, but when you really open it, it's a mess. Okay. Don't allow that want to molest you. Your life is beautiful. You as you are right now is good, boo. You don't got to be doing all that. You understand me? <laughs> so I love you guys so freaking much. And it's such an honor to share space with you. If you would like to book a session with me, um, you can find all of my description. No, you can find all of my information in the description below. I love you. And I will catch you on the channel. Take care.